Hello and welcome to Eternal Serpentary. So today I wanted to discuss a few types of spirits that serve under Belial and that you can receive as familiars. The first type of spirit is of course the 50 legions that serve under Belial. Now these are demonic or infernal spirits that have not yet been recorded I believe and are inhumane, very powerful spirits. And when I say inhumane they were never human unlike the second type of spirit you can receive from Belial, which is actually the spirits of dead devotees, uh, spirits of people who have died in path workings with Belial, or have agreed to join him in the afterlife and serve under him, uh, which happens quite frequently, uh, no doubt. The third type of familiar, which is actually one that I received, is the Hellhounds. Now, what is a hellhound? A hellhound is a mythical hound which embodies a guardian or a servant of hell, the devil of the underworld. They occur in mythologies around the world, uh, Greek mythology being Cerberus, uh, Norse mythology, English folklore, and they've been actually spotted manifesting uh, throughout the world many times. And they're referred to commonly as uh, black dogs in, um, I believe, English folklore. I could be wrong. But uh, that's what they referred to. Now, what can these spirits do, the hellhounds? Um, they're mainly protective. He will gift them to you for protective reasons. Um, say you're having a gate opening operation and something's trying to intervene with it or you need protection because it's a risky operation. And when I say risky, I mean it's a... Something that other spirits may want to stop because when you open a gate for a certain agenda, for a spirit, there's always going to be another spirit that has an opposite agenda and may want to try and intervene or stop that. So that's why they will gift them onto you. Also, just general all around protection as well. Now, these are different from the hounds of Hecate. Uh, Hecate, um, her hounds are a part of her and they are completely separate from other how do I put this up, quote-unquote breeds of hellhounds. Um, I asked Belly, I like, are you the only one that has hellhounds? He just went, no, of course not. Like, anyone who has authority in the underworld has hellhounds because they guard the gates of the underworld and drag back souls that wish to leave when they're not meant to. And this is coming to the second skill of what these uh, hellhounds can do. They can... <laughs> they can... Bainfully attack someone, and uh, when I was exploring this option with him, he explained it as they can rip and tear spirit from flesh. Uh, what does that mean? They will rip the astral bodies from your foes and maul them. Absolutely rip them to shreds. Sort of like astral assassination almost. Um, they can... You can play fetch with them. And when I say play fetch, I mean you need an item, you send them out into the world to get it. Uh, for example, you need like a quartz crystal or something, just off the top of my head, and you send them out into the world to get it. A couple of days later, someone will give it to you or it will come about somehow. Um, so they're very, very useful spirits to work with, absolutely. Now, I also wanted to give a uh, chant or chant to be vibrated uh, to call upon Belial. It's sort of like a universal chant for Belial, so you can use it for devotion, invocation, evocation, uh, whatever you wish. So that uh, chant is Kar Roksti Mar Beni Belial. Uh, I will type it in the description so you can have the full spelling of it and everything and the proper pronunciation. So, um, once you start receiving the familiar from Belial, you'll want to, one, get a sigil. Um, because even if you have them bound to an item, it's always good to just have a sigil so you can do sigil magic really quickly, um, very quickly. And sometimes it's not always the best to continually coat an item with blood, especially if, if it's a small little necklace, you know what I mean? So you can give blood onto the sigils instead. Two, you will want uh, the name. Uh, 
because there is truth in if you know a spirit's name. You don't technically have power over them, right? But you do have power because it's a whole lot harder to summon a spirit when you don't know their name. Um, I will also go about how I sort of bound uh, these two hellhounds to a necklace uh, that I have. Um, so, firstly... I summoned Belial to was present in the room and went over the terms of agreement uh, with him. And what do I mean by that? I mean what offerings they take, how often I should be giving it to them, um, what their purpose is for me, like what, what are they going to be doing without me asking around me all the time, and what's the procedure for when I want them to do something that is beyond the reason he's given them to me. So you should always go through these sort of, I don't know if the contract's the right word, but you should go through these details because it helps a lot. I'll give an example of why. Belial explained to me very specific, do not give more, do not give blood more than once a month to them. Um, he didn't go in depth why, he just said don't. Give them meat, uh, give them this, that, etc. more than once a month if you wish, if you have them doing things extra, but do not give them your blood more than once a month. The hellhounds that he gives specifically. Now, once I had him summoned and we went through these sort of terms of agreements, uh, he sort of summoned them for me and they were there. I already had the uh, names and sigils, so I had the two sigils ready. I put blood on the sigils as offerings, burnt them to give the blood officially as offerings by burning it, and to collect the ashes, right? And I got a necklace. And with this necklace, I coated um, the necklace in the ashes of the sigils uh, very thoroughly. Um, and as I've done this, Belial's sort of astrally conjured a chain and like put it like around their neck and then brought it over to me and he's going i've done my end you do your end so i will then get the chain and bind it to the necklace right uh and have an incantation that he's given to me for binding and once that is complete i will then put more blood onto the necklace uh, to both charge it and to also sort of give it a state of permanency, the binding. Like, blood stains. And, like, if something stains, it's sort of got an energy of permanency, if that makes sense, right? So whatever binding we've done uh, will be more permanent and enhanced with the blood. And this is going into blood magic, which is something I will possibly make future videos about. So, once that's done, the hellhound or hellhounds uh, are bound to the necklace and you wear it, etc. Um, so, that's pretty much the whole binding procedure I went through with him to bind the hellhounds to something um, of mine. You can use anything, a ring, a necklace, a, a cup, you know, a hat, as long as it's sort of like, it doesn't have to, but has some sort of reference to the spirit. Um, because I had two hellhounds given to me, I got uh, an onyx uh, tooth that's like in a little uh, claw shape. So that to me really spoke out to me. I'm like, yeah, that's it. That's the item I want to bind them to. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this has been really useful. I hope I've given you some insight. You've learned something. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed this and have an awesome day.